got some folding right there in the rocks. And some shear right here. If you look right there. I can't even talk, I'm so out of breath. That sounds hot. That doesn't scream beautiful. I don't know what does. Don't know if you're gonna pick that up. That is one gnarly tree root. the next day after the hike. I don't want to be too loud for people next to me so I don't disturb them but I do kind of I'm hoping you can hear this because it's it is kind of windy. Um, but this was a six mile hike about six miles all uphill. It was a But that's about a 2,000 foot gain in altitude. Now this is in the middle of June, close to the end of June. And uh, what you're seeing here is the, begin the end of spring and the beginning of summer. And we still have a snow cap up there. And right across there, maybe the camera is not going to do it justice, but that snow over there is maybe 500 feet away it's or not or maybe a little more than 500 feet but it's not very far away at all um, i could walk to it 
it's it's in walking distance. It'll take a while because I have to go all uphill and walk on rocks, but um, yeah, the snow is it's quite nice up here actually. It's not too um, cold. Like the wind comes in, you get a little bit of a breeze, but for the most part, it's the sun's out and it feels warm. So let's take a minute to talk about how Gaia is used to create similar scenes like this. And this is just one location. I'm going to be moving to two different lakes. This one down here is Lake Blanche. There are two other ones that I'm going to hit up during this quest. So there will be plenty of content, but I just wanted to kind of show you guys kind of how the landscape out there would be formed. Um, and you probably all have a good idea of how it will be formed, but in terms of 3D, this is what we're looking at. Over there, all that rock over there, that talus, that's what talus is, it's all that. That's the rock up there, big jutting rock. Hopefully my hand is doing justice, but that will thaw and crack because ice will get into the crevices and the cracks of the rock and it will expand and break off chunks of rock over the course of you know so many years and then uh, the sun will actually come down during the come up during the summer and uh, it'll heat up the rock and expand it even more just little bits here and there uh, and that's where you get your thermal erosioning coming in so <clears throat> what will happen is the rock will fall and that will create a rock slide uh, you have a talus, and then you need detail in the talus. You can use the debris size that's built into the talus, or built into thermal, or you can use a rock slide erosion um, to, to get that similar effect. Now when it comes to rocks like this, on the ground, or big ones like that, or even rock features across the way over there across the lake, what you're going to want to use is a multifractal. Um, this is why it was one of my most all-time favorite additions. It's because you can use multifractal and fold to get these effects that you see. You might not be able to get the detail in the fine, the fine details in Gaia, uh, but if you throw it into something like uh, Mixer, Mega Scan Mixer, or um, or any of your other favorite uh, texturing applications, you can get that look very simply. Uh, you use masks. Now let me break down what you would want to use for masks, and this probably isn't the best video ever, but it is my first one, so. Uh, for masks, it's quite simple, because in Gaia you can draw the mask, you don't have to use just basic selectors. So, <clears throat> if you wanted to put in a lake right here, now that we have uh, lakes that we can put in, you just throw in a mask, output it from your last height output, input it into the mask of your lakes uh, for your uh, for your water I can't remember the rainfall something similar to that so essentially what you're doing is that you're just drawing what you're what you want your lake to look like or maybe just a tiny little dot and then Gaia does the rest of the calculations so you plug that into your rainfall output mask on the lakes and then you can have it so it's like a localized rain effect here so that is super nice very easy so I'm going to end this one right here. Um, it's about five minutes in and I don't want to take too much long time just showing you the same landscape here without me kind of moving around and, and showing you stuff. But I want to say hi to you all. Hello. Uh, I look like garbage because that hike up here kicked my butt. But um, in any case, let's move around to some other areas. I'm going to set up camp. I moved. I was sleeping right over there, but you can see how it's all super rocky. Yeah, that's no good. So I'm going to move my stuff right there, and I'm going to set up my camp down there. We had uh, some neighbors that were here before me, but they're leaving, so I'm going to take over that spot. It looks much more grassy and nice to sleep on. So uh, I'll get back with you guys here in just a minute on some some more different features we're going to get. We're going to look at all those rocks over there and how we can create stuff like that. So that's going to be nice. Let's take a minute to talk about that range right there. So. You could use range when you're using setting things up in Gaia um, And you can just go on if you're trying to make a simple scene You can just be on one side and looking up at the range However, what you 
could use um, that would probably be a little bit better because you don't have to see anything on the other side of where you're at you could use slope noise now in Gaia you want to change your uh, terrain definition so you have the right scaling uh, and slope noise specifically uh, will allow you to use a um, a recurve or recursive uh, noise to it so you can get um, everything always leaves me as soon as I start talking I swear uh, terracing and you can use residual terracing but what you could use is the slope noise um, and then blend in some billowy fractal noise and then what you got is the top peak right there that kind of loops around like that <clears throat> if my hands doing justice here like that so <clears throat> billowy will give you those features that you want and then you just combine them together using whichever blending method that you want but then you also have the terracing that you have inside the fractal of the slope noise itself but you want to use the residual amounts coming down from the actual terracing so you don't have a uniform terrace going across the entire landscape you have terracing that starts over here those rock terraces right there they kind of come down and over and then they break up like right here you have a terrace right there and that breaks and then it continues so you want to use some residual terracing to get that effect so i'm hoping you hear me all right but interesting idea these clouds way up here you can use ice flow to make a cloud map just so you know i've done it before not with ice flow but with other height maps that i made uh using warp and swirl and things like that in world machine and gaia but you can use ice flow to make those patterns in the clouds if you wanted to just some food for thought um, i'm about to embark on a different journey that way towards another lake <clears throat> but i need to boil some water because i ran out of water and uh don't want to go without water so anyways yeah ice flow for the clouds uh keep that in mind while you're making some some stuff Hopefully you can hear me over that waterfall, but you can see the height elevation in the snowpack right there that forms around the rocks as it melts. It's pretty cool. But another interesting thing, I want to look at some nature here. Let's see if we can climb up. See how the heat from the rocks cuts into it. So if you want to form your snow on a height map, you can form it against your rocks just like that inside of Gaia. You can use a mixture of max or blend, whichever works the best for you. But I think maybe in this case, subtract would probably work to help you blend it in. what used to be called landform to make stuff just like that take all this billowy folding landform I, I always forget the name of it now but you could use it to do just that so in addition to Lake Blanche which is up that way past that waterfall you have this lake 
and I can't remember the names of these lakes. It's uh, Lake Blanche and Lake Florence, I think. Oh, I can't remember. Now I gotta pull out the map and look. Lillian. So I'm, I don't know what this lake is. This lake specifically, I think it's Florence, but I could be wrong. There's a big old fish down in there. Um, but this one past here, there's another lake over there, just right over this lake, uh, past that way. I'm going to go there and uh, we're gonna get some footage of that one. So I think Lillian has probably the best view. You have a whole bunch of structure there. Plus it's pretty much far away from everyone else. People usually go to Blanche, walk around Blanche and then go back because it takes a long time to get up here. But if you spend the night, it's not that bad. You can walk around um, these lakes in less than an hour and uh, you see all sorts of wildlife. So, for instance, we saw moose this morning. That was pretty cool. And there's all sorts of fish inside the, these lakes. Um, they have a couple different types. They have uh, brook and cutthroat and brown trout. Um, they also have what's called arctic grayling. Those are pretty cool. They have a big old dorsal fin that it looks unique, big old blue dorsal fin. Look, down there, you probably won't be able to see it with this camera, but there's a fish, there's fish. Big fish, nice sized fish right there in the water. And they're huge in these lakes. Um, they have a lot of natural resources up here that they can eat, like, you know, bugs and other fish, but they are infrequently fished. Uh, people do come up here to fish, but they're just infrequently fished. They grow to be pretty large sizes here. Um, another thing is, is that these lakes and up here, you can't have campfires because it's a natural watershed. So they don't allow campfires up here and that makes it hard to catch a fish and eat it unless you have a stove that runs on gas, but then what are you gonna do with the remains of the fish? Uh, so I would like to catch one. There's a whole school of them down there right down there it's like six of them one two three four five six yeah six of them so that they're 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 good sizes i would love to get my hands on one i'm a big fisherman so i like fishing um another thing is is let's take a look at these structures over here well i've got you on camera um fold will make these structures here so what you do is you take a large mountain scape that you created that's fairly um, noiseless, just lots of big mountainous structures, but they don't have a whole lot of noise to them or a lot of detail. And then you use fold and you merge in fold with a combine. So you merge fold as well as um, like whatever structure you made, probably using max. Um, or yeah, Max would probably be a pretty good one to use. So you can have these jutting rocks that come out of your landscape and then all the other other pieces of your landscape, the flat parts, blend nice, nicely and seamlessly in with your landscape. So what you do is after you've got your major formations made and then you have your fold created and merged in, you go ahead and use something like um, sediment, something very similar to sediment, and use that as your final erosion to blend in the seams of everything so things look more organic. And then what you can do is you can actually export 
your mountainous regions separately from your fold uh, through the combiner using the separate output mask and that way you can use that to colorize or anything like that. Up there you'll see that we have a lot of rock slide up there. That's not necessarily done by talusing even though there is taluses up there. Those aren't necessarily done by talusing. Those are just rocks that fell. Um, that would be really nice to use rock slide for as well. And then another interesting point, thing to point out is that snow pack. So you can combine multiple snows together in Gaia. You don't have to stick with one snow map. And this is actually a good way to do it. So you make your mountains, get the snow you want on the majority of your mountains, and then bring in another uh, snow node and use something like the shadow um, the shadow maps from your uh, your light node sorry I'm trying to catch my breath still <clears throat> uh, the shadow node from your your light node and you can actually plug that into the melt for the snow and then you'll have snow where there's shadows and then um, where there's not shadows there won't be any snow so that would be pretty helpful all right so to break down what I was talking about there um, and I do apologize for that I am I was really tired uh, out of energy out of breath and I don't think I had enough oxygen going to my brain um, anyways the explanation breakdown uh, does stand on its own a little bit but I want to kind of just go through it with you guys and show you exactly what I mean so I went ahead and made just a quick scene I just have this mountain equalized it a bit uh, eroded it quite heavily uh, I'm not gonna do anything special here I'm just gonna do some standard erosion uh, then you throw in a light node in the light node you want to turn ambient light off you don't want to have a whole bunch of ambience going on here it could uh, it makes it a little bit harder for the uh, snow melt mask to work you can use it I just recommend not using it because uh, results will vary depending on what you do and then what I like to do is I like to have just some shadows barely on the mountain to start with like this so you can kind of see what's going on you can see all these shadows we go to the snowfall and assuming that everything is set correctly the snowfall should appear only where the shadows appear however it's not updating my uh, mask here and the reason why is I think it's because I included the ambient lights so let's turn off the ambient light we don't need it let's go back to the snowfall and let's uncheck that and recheck it you can kind of see what it's doing here it's uh, still not updating the mask properly it has the old light mask instead of the new one and I think it's probably from this light as well so this is at 12641 so let's make sure that this is also at 126 41 this one you can have the ambient light on it doesn't matter so it's in the same location there we go now if we turn the the mask on and off you can see how where there's shadows we're getting some melt but it's not enough so let's go ahead and change this so let's use uh, let's just in decrease the elevation a bit maybe let's go to 25 just so we have longer shadows yeah about like that maybe or uh, maybe a little higher there we go so 28 just so we have matching light let's go ahead and I wish there was an override option for this where if you have a light node then you don't have to worry about it but since we're just using this light node for masks it's not using this light for anything except for generating masks so now you can see our snowfall is now following our uh, shadows. So if you were to, if you wanted snow to appear more heavily in shadowed areas, this is how you would do it. You would go about using the light node mixed in with the melt. So uh, from the light connected to your erosion or whatever height output you have right here. And then this is just some arbitrary mask generating node and then you take the shadow mask and attach it to the melt and you can also do shadow and you can attach it to snowfall as well you're gonna get about the same result 
so it doesn't really matter. You're still going to get snow in those areas, but you have to use snowfall mask. So you can get a few different th variations of uh, snow here. In this case, you probably don't want to use the snowfall in this case because snow would fell there. But, um, but you have to make sure that if you're going to be using these masks that you turn them on here. Otherwise, it won't work. So let's go ahead and talk about the other thing that we were doing now that I showed you how to use the light uh, node for masking. Let's throw in a, uh, I don't know. We wanted to have like big mount mountainous features that were vague of a lot of detail. And I think the best way to do that would be Perlin. We have a lot of control over our scale and our octaves with Perlin. So let's go ahead and increase the scale here, maybe about like that. And it's just going to be very quick and rough. And we'll turn the detail down about maybe like that. Maybe a little less. And we'll keep FBM. We don't need to change much here. But I do want to make this a little bit easier to see. So I'm going to use a zero borders. There we go. And now we're just going to copy this Perlin. And uh, let's increase. We're going to change the, the, the seed just by one. doesn't really matter. Just we got to have something different. And let's increase the octaves so we have more detail coming in. And we can increase it all the way if we wanted. And let's also increase the scale just a tad bit more. And let's throw in fold. All right, now we have those folding rock shapes. We could also displace it or warp it if we wanted to. Now we got to find what we want in our fold. We, we want it to be elevated so we have them poking up like this but we also need them coming out at a specific angle and I think maybe 45 degrees will work. Now we just got to play around with these settings until we find what we like. And we don't want the range to be too high. If you go back and look at the video, the rocks aren't really jutting out all that much. And of course this is rough. You're going to want to play around with it a bit. Maybe about right there. Folding. We're just going to kind of warp the folding a bit using that. And we're going to increase the rift because we had big crevices coming down because of that rift. We just wanted to make sure that it they were not too prominent. All right. So I'm thinking that might be good. And then what we do is we just take all these and we combine them. So let's go ahead and combine. We might have to change this fold around a bit so we it's not as high of an elevation. And then what we will do is we'll use something like max. Yeah, so let's go ahead and decrease the elevation of this fold real quick. So the way to do that, we can do a couple things. We'll just clamp it. We can try to clamp it anyways. but we don't want to flatten it. I think that might be good. Yeah, there we go. You can see them come through. Now you can increase max. Go back to this and let's increase the clamp a bit more until we find what we like. There we go. And uh, you don't have to stick with max. You can do other things like blend. Blending might work pretty well. I just go to max by default for a lot of things like that. And we can just go through it. This one right here work, works pretty well. You can subtract it. So we have our peaky landscape and then we have our folding rocks that are going through it. Let's keep looking. That's not going to do it. Even power would probably work pretty well. If you increase the power, you get a little bit more of that fold. If you decrease it, you get a little bit more of that, that Perlin fractal. So those are some ways you can do it. Uh, that would, those are very simple techniques. That's what I was talking about. Folding is important in nature. If we go back and look at some of the older footage that, or the earlier footage I have in that, that video, you'll see folding occur on the mountainsides pretty well. So that's about what you would want to do.
Um, and of course, playing around with it a bit more will will make things a lot easier or look a lot better. But the nice thing is, is I don't have to spend too much time doing it here because I'm actually going to be breaking down some of the stuff that I saw up there anyways in a different series of videos. So I just wanted to break it down for you here because uh, I, I wanted to make sure that you can see that, you know, those things can be done. So let's get back to it. It was pretty important to point out because see this rock, it's very smooth. Good, kind of dips in on itself. Hopefully I'm seeing, you're getting it. It's done by snow thaw, snowpack. So, and heat, but the snow lays down on it, the rock heats up, and then there's still snow on it as the rock is heating up. It gets deep into these areas, right down into here, in those areas. And it chips, as you can see here, it's chipping away at the rock. Also, a lot of people travel on this too, but the snow lays down on it, thaws, creates this bowl effect in your rock. This rock probably used to be spiky and like this. A lot of this rock is all smoothed over, but it used to look a lot like that. Over there, a lot like that. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Okay. 